Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a minute since my last recording. I think uh, the last one was the weapons tier list for one hand and two hand swords. But um, if you've been following the channel, you probably noticed the background's different. I've moved my desk around and I've sort of set up a desk lamp in front of my laptop as well so you can see me a little bit clearer. Anyway, because it's been so long and as we know, Neo Reincarnation is moving very fast on the global server so there's been a lot of changes, lots of updates which I sort of wanted to take you guys over through today. Um, and of course, today marks the first day of October and we have the reset in the exchange shop, uh, premium shop as well. So be aware of all those things guys. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about them all in due time, but I think the first thing is I wanted to talk about the director's letter that came through the other day, which I'm very happy about, the director's desk volume 1. It means that the developers are obviously reaching out to their player base, and it means they really care about what we have to say, and, um, you know, it's just green light all around. Anyway, so... We have, first off, we have 15 million downloads worldwide. Impressive, very impressive feat for a game. And we know that in around each arena bracket, there's about 5,000 players. Let's say around half of these are invalid accounts or whatever. So can you imagine how many PvP brackets there are? That's the first thing I thought about. Anyway, so the next one we have chapter 12 coming out soon, confirmed on October the 13th, which is, you know, in about two weeks from now, we have X. Theo and X Lavania coming out, which is our fist users. And I heard that Lavania is a actual beast in both PvP and PvE. And quite a lot of my friends are already saving up ZF cubes and whatnot for him when he comes out to max him out. And it's gonna be a big event. There's gonna be lots of hopefully lots of things that we can play. I, I really do enjoy the fast pace by the way. Um, I know there are certain people out there who are struggling a little bit to keep up and I can understand that but me personally this is my only game that I play apart from a bit of like Dota 2 or whatever on the side but nothing that takes up this amount of time right so it's just this one gacha so I'm very happy about that. Next up we have a version control English, Korean and Japanese servers. They have confirmed that they are trying to bring the bring all these servers up to speed all these um all these versions right so we have the point is that so they can get according to them workflow to release events in all versions as close to the same time as possible so that christmas and anniversaries and stuff can happen together at once which is hard for us now uh just due to we need to catch up and we don't have enough gems to pull on all the banners and stuff but eventually it'll be really nice okay um, and we won't need to have two accounts, especially for content creators. We won't need to have two accounts to be able to provide the latest updates to you guys. Next, we have Subjugation Battles Confirmed, which you probably know by now is going to be like a three-way raid boss where you need to set up a team of three-by-three three party. Um, so you'll need nine units and all, the, all their gear, equipment, memoirs, companions, everything. And the goal is to do as much damage as possible in the time that you're allocated. You cannot kill the boss, you just need to do as much damage as possible. So obviously those people who have, you know, has pulled on most of the banners or have spent money will have a certain advantage in this event. Um, this is very much an account check, account wide check, to see what you've got and how, how you know, how strong your overall account is. Um, don't feel like you need to do extremely well on this because there's just going to be a huge disparity between accounts depending on what you've pulled before i will also make a guide on this um for three star units to use because most of you guys probably know by now if you've been following the channel that i've gone to pay to play um but in the past i like that was only very very recently so i don't have many units and stuff so i'll still be using three star so i'll be able to help out with which three star units are sort of the best for subjugation next up we have the map function which is really awesome it's like another thing that we can play in the game when you've done everything else that you need to do it's where you can literally run around in the cage um you can replay previous missions without using any stamina there are also unique rewards for replaying using the map function 
and there'll be special events that happen in completed parts of the cage, which I'm looking forward to. That could be really interesting, really fun. And we have new stories and enemies to appear in the completed parts of the cage. Super cool. Did not expect that one, to be honest. Some quality of life updates as well. We have um, activating daily summons and daily challenges from the menu directly, so you don't have to walk mama over. Um, but once they do that, there's no point in even moving around anymore, so... It is what it is. Well, next we have altering unlock conditions for daily summons and daily challenges. So probably don't need to finish. I think this is what this is suggesting is, suggesting is that you won't need to finish like all the quests, all the stories to be able to unlock these, which is good for newer players so that you guys aren't missing out on daily summons, which we get five daily summons per day for free. And it'll be easier to collect the items in the, in the mum's room. So again, Less walking. Who likes the walking anyway? Now, some possible promises. Not guaranteed, but some possible things that will be coming is a 3D viewer, uh, potentially in battles, so we can, you know, probably pan the camera around, have a better have a better view on things. We'll be able to change character battle outfits, which is big hype. So then we'll be able to change our costumes around potentially with other, um, say if you've got you know a couple of copies of Gale or, or Noel or whatever, and you like one better than the other, you can probably change the outfits. Might be a little bit confusing in PvP. Uh, I don't know if they will implement that in PvP because that will just throw people off big time. Quest skip functions and skip tickets, crucial. All right, I'm so sick of doing the same missions, the same dailies every single day for like the dark memories and stuff. I'm actually done and I'm, this is what, like two months in. Um, yeah, I'm so glad they're adding this. You can skip multiple quests at once and they want to shorten the game startup time, which is nice. Probably fix up some of the code, right? Using multiple exploration tickets at once. This will be really good for some of you guys who have stocked up. I, I've gone a massive exploration streak just doing like 30 to 40 tickets like time after time and it just gets so boring and this this is definitely a very good quality of life update adding the ability to save three memoirs as a set and seeing the tributes of memoir immediately upon its drop so we have memoir quality of life updates too really nice and final word from them they wanted to say that the team is honestly still quite new and we want all our players from around the world to fall in love with the game and we'll continue to develop and operate near reincarnation so that brings everyone greater joy. Again, very good. Uh, we can see that developers really care, and this game has blown up beyond you know their wildest imaginations. 15 mil downloads, so we should be able to see lots, lots more um, cooperation between the community and the developers in the near future. All right, so that's covered, and that was important. I feel like I needed to cover that. Um, there was, there was a time when, you know, we started the game and everyone was complaining about various various things, but now we have confirmation that there will be ongoing communication with developers. I'm very happy about that. Next thing I wanted to do is cover off the new event and the banner, which is the, the event is called the Record, the Seat of Shadow. So let's just quickly look over that. I'm obviously late to the party. I've done it already, but I haven't talked about it. So most of you guys have probably done this already. But um, stock standard three sets of 10, three by 10 quests. So we have 30 quests and each one gives you 180 gems in total if you finish all the, all the challenges. All the challenges. And I've done them all. And the, the general consensus is that if you're getting, you know, if you're equipping the events or the banner weapons, you get bonus medals per run. And the consensus is that if you don't have any bonuses, then you should be running, you should be farming this event for the exchange shop on quest nine, very hard. And once you have over 20 bonus medals, which is, you know, the event weapons from the banner or the exchange shop, then you should drop down into normal mode and go to quest three. You get the best um, stamina to metal ratio. All right. Going to the exchange shop. So I've already bought out everything I feel I need for my account. If you're new, I will say that pick up the Ruby Gems, the Explorer tickets. 
if you are running three stars, potentially the media, uh, intermediate handbook, the black uh, natural pearl. And potentially you might need some of these stones as well. Okay, these, these rocks. And maybe gold. If you're a bit of a whale and, I don't know, you've run out of gold because you've maxed out too many characters and weapons, you might need more gold. But as for me, I picked up the new three star unit. <clears throat> She's actually really good for PvP, guys for a three star obviously stats wise it's going to be lower than four stars but she's got all the right stats for it so i'm not going to cover that now just because I, I i feel like i'm already using up a lot of time but go ahead and check out your uh hexes your guardian exile ryan and you can see that she's got really good passives and abilities for pvp i've max i've got you know got a max out got the staff max out to farm the event bought the three premium summer tickets three right so measly you're not going to be able to do much of that but get them anyway Definitely get the term mama medals. Grab the insignia of skill, insignia of quality. 100% always need to grab these from every exchange, guys. Every single time. And also got the small stamina recovery. I have se severely run out of stamina. Ever since the half stamina event was, um, you know, concluded on itself and we started the two-time stamina event. Uh, it's just it's just been a hard time for me, at least. I don't know about you guys. Alright, let's move on to the actually no hang on just quickly talk about the exchange shop with a monthly reset so the mama medals of course grab your premium sum, sum tickets times three and your other single premium sum tickets all 30 of them and then whatever's left you can grab stamina pots and yeah you get a thousand each month so 300 plus 300 600 Plus, you can potentially pick this up if you want, but I'd probably go for this for more stamina. So that's 300. That'll be a th that'll be 900 out of a thousand, right? And that's basically we, the best thing you can get out of it. If you're looking for four-star weapons, dupes, and stuff, and you're willing to spend 600 on a four-star ticket, by all means, go ahead. I mean, after all, mama medals, medal, sorry, are free. Uh, so feel free to do what you want with that. But I would recommend always grabbing these because these go towards your your what's it called? Your pity banners when you want to pull on a you know pull for a unit that you really want medals i think everyone knows by now that these are massive sorry the four star is a massive bait Twenty thousand medals is insane guys i definitely do not recommend getting that for your standard medals pick up all the small stamina recovery potions and the medium stamina recovery co potions and then save the medals for the next reset all right, that's all I'm going to say about that. Rare metals. Once again, these are baits. Both of these two. Do not get them. Use your rare metals on large stamina recovery potions. End of that. Arena coins. These reset on a weekly basis. I personally recommend that you will get the Black Pearl. I've already bought it out for this week. It's the cheapest out of, out of the good ones. So 1,200 versus Polycrystal for 1,500. Zenith Brilliance for 1,500. Black Pearls... Uh, this is pretty much only free way you can get black pearls, okay? Which, except for one other way, bookmarks we'll talk about in a second. But yeah, I think black pearls is the best bang for your buck with arena coins. All right, polycrystal thoughts and a brilliance you can get that with doing the reset method, which I'll talk about again as well in a second. Bookmarks, uh, we can get the black pearl here, but I highly suggest you do not, and I highly suggest instead you get the insignia of skill. Or insignia of quality mainly most likely the quality for your weapon to max out your weapons when you max out your weapons guys the cooldown drops by a second so if you're if you checked out my pvp video or the weapon tier list video and, and i'm talking about you know um which weapons have the fastest cooldowns and all that that's all that is based on the fact if the weapon is maxed out so you actually need these insignia of qualities to be able to max those weapon skills out okay uh, your fleet foot buff your weapon skill cooldowns this is this is critical i would always recommend if you have 1500 bookmarks lying around guys just pick up two of these right off the bat 100 percent. okay so this is the only way you can get insignia of quality and insignia of skill um free to play and on resets this is the only way you can get those so that's why i said get black pearl from arena coins and with bookmarks get the insignias now with dark coins uh this is obviously constant there's no reset timer here you just get these when you get the coins but for me i've spent all my dark coins on buying polycrystals of thought to max out my x weapons i've got a video coming out on pvp an updated pvp loadout video for season two of the arena 
I'll drop that very soon. And I've got my four X weapons, one hand swords and two hand swords all maxed out using this. Now with my dark coins, I'm going to start buying out um, the robust wheel and the large hope to get the to get the skills and the passives maxed. That's my next step. Obviously, don't get Xenos Brilliance. You're not going to be able to get it anyway. Who has 100,000 <laughs> dark coins lying around? The, the Supreme Adoration is uh, potentially worth getting if you lack these and you can max out your weapon skills and passives. But more than likely, when you're doing the reset method, then you will have a couple of these stocked up anyway. So the reset method, guys, is when you literally go into quest and then <clears throat> sub-quest, go into your dark memory, go into your daily, right? Go into the daily. These, the dailies have the highest drop rate. Click into that. You literally just start it and you beat the first two waves and once you get to the boss, pause the game, check your loot. If you've got a purple, then finish the boss, kill him and you'll have your purple drop. If you didn't get a purple, then just quit out. Quit out the mission and, and then the daily will still be there for you to do. So you can keep doing that uh, for as long as you want. As long as you've got enough stamina and the time, then you can farm Zenith cubes and other purples without too much trouble. Obviously, that's if you're committed to do that. All right. Now for our review of what's the name? New Noel. Okay, we're going to review every single unit and weapon that comes out from now on without fail, just because we've done that tier list already. Coming out with the character tier list as well soon enough, and I just want to be constant with what I say about their weapons and their passives and their abilities and stuff. So this has just dropped, I think, two days ago or a day ago. We have a new Noelle who, you know, looks pretty cool. She's got pretty high attack. Not the highest, but up there, right? Very very much up there, like two piece sitting around 6,300, that kind of level. So she's, she's pretty up there. Defense is pretty good as well. HP is low, agility is standard. Her character skill is a gauge level A, so it's the slowest type. There's A, B, and C. A takes the longest, B is the middle, and C is the fastest loading time. She does 600% damage, 5 hits, 120% for 5 hits, and damage is increased by 60% when over when HP is over 80%. So this could be good if you're going first in PvP, or probably more likely you'll be running her in PvE. Attack up 25% from her passive, and she gets a recovery skill, 20% HP when her HP drops, by 70, drops below 70%, activated only once. Um, pretty good. I would probably give her like, Excuse me, I'd probably give her like a A tier for PvE. Um, just because this is a one-time activation for recovery, right? It could it could be good, but it's just because PvE, if you're going to be using this, um, if you need recovery, you're either using a recovery unit already, or you probably need a bit more recovery than, than this. You know what I mean, but f absolutely feel free to disagree. I haven't, I don't have her, so I don't have the hard facts. This is just my initial impressions. Okay, yeah, in PvP, I'd say she's probably around an AT as well. She's got good damage, why not? And then her weapons 20 second cooldown on her weapon skill 1, 65% damage to a single enemy target, 5 seconds, uh, 5 times, 100% inflict poison. I still haven't worked out poison yet. Some of the guys in the Discord are trying to figure out how, how poison is working, the damage and stuff, how it's calculated. But once I once once we figure out, I'll let you know. Second weapon skill, 19 seconds. We have 55% damage to one enemy four times and recover HP by 10%. <laughs> Not bad. Weapon skills are very slow though, obviously. Um, critical rate, 15% up and vigor attack up 10%. I'd say this is probably an S tier for PvE. And for PvP, probably like an A or something. All right, this weapon. Machine Axe. Now this, I know already that this is an S tier for PvE, uh, just from the game with website, but now we have a first hand look at it. Huge attack. We have big damage as well. 27 seconds cooldown on weapon skill 110% damage to one enemy three times with damage increased by 40% when HP is over 80%. So when you're running healers and stuff, this could be a very powerful main, like your carry. If you're running two healers, like, I don't know, when you guys were doing tower this, this time around, you probably realized by the end you need to run two healers and keeping that HP up. So your carry is probably sitting around over 80%, you know, most of the time. And if you're doing weak, uh, 
you know easier easier quests missions you'll have good hp anyway so this is good damage you'll be able to activate that passive this again just another huge damaging skills 75 percent damage to one enemy five times it's massive 20 second 20 seconds cooldown and 20 se 27 seconds cooldown so immediately i know that this is not a pvp weapon because it's you know very slow weapon skill cooldowns attack up 15 percent for its passive and then we got a hp recovery when you drop under 70 percent and like an auto cure okay this is s tier for pve and probably eh, b tier for pvp uh what's, what's next we have we have a three-star version of noelle she has very high defense and very low attack high agility her character skill is activated very fast gauge level c Okay, 90% damage to single attack enemy four times, 100% chance to inflict poison for five turns, defense up 20%, and agility up 16%. I'd say she's probably like a solid A tier for PvP, right? Um, defense actually turns out to be quite good. We're, we're also working on, some of the guys in Discord are working on a defense build, namely Orpheus, and Flip is also supporting him on that. Um, defense has been understated and undervalued in the past season of arena guys i uh, i'm just gonna say it right now i i think there's gonna be a big meta shift soon enough probably this season and if not this season definitely next season where people are gonna start focusing less on um, glass cannons and start moving towards towards the fence so keep your eyes peeled all right i'm not kidding it's coming soon agility is always going to be meta um and yeah Weapon. Nothing really to talk about there. Yeah, weapons pretty average. Okay, so that's the new event and banner done. Now for the final today, I'm going to pull on this Neo Day banner. I'm very happy that this has come out. I wanted to say that it looks like Neo Day will not be the same event each time. I believe they're going to try and shake it up a little bit. So this time is going to be, you know, a, a really nice banner that we can pull using free gems on. So for free to play players, I highly recommend doing this because you get these 10 books if you do it five times. Um, try not to pull if you don't have the 10k gems, free to play gems or pay to play gems uh, saved up. Try to make sure you have that so you can actually get the, you know, the stack of 10 books so that when you do want to limit break, a unit a good unit that you have you will have the 10 books ready you can't do with eight so it's almost not worth it doing at that point all right so very worth it and i don't think i have anything else to say about that rates probably we can look at the rates remember guys when you pull on banners whether i've dropped a video about it or not just before you do any pulling please have a look at the rates all right they're not they're not the same each time and people have been baited too many times over and over time over and over again and just a little bit concerning but we can see there's no there's no rate up here so what that means is statistically we're not going to be based towards a certain character or weapon which is good for me at least because when i go into this banner i'm looking for a metals b rare metals uh, from getting dupes and C I'm looking for potentially a four-star weapon like a Phoenix dagger or a Titan sword All right, that's my goal. I'm not expecting to get anything guys, but Whatever, let's go for it Skip. I heard there was such a thing as streamer's luck. Right, let's see what I got. Titan Sword, Phoenix Dagger. Come on. No comment. Ooh. Twelve of those books though. Oh. 
looking good so far, guys. Mm, I've got this one already, so... Probably good to have a couple more dupes. I don't have any spear users yet, so this might come in handy later on. Did I not have that? Hmm. Can't keep track anymore. There's too many spears and guns. And staffs. <laughs> oh wow, three in a row. I'm definitely buying to this streamers luck thing because I didn't do so well in those wind summer banner. Probably would have saw. And that was right up, so... But I guess the overall rate is still the same, so it doesn't make a difference. Oh, lag. Oh, new unit! Let's go! Who is it? I want that new obey, 063Y. His two-hand fire sword is... very good. Okay, I don't think it's him. say anything. Oh wow. All right. Even though it's all staff users and whatnot, I'll take that. I just, I just hope that they were like dupes, but it looked like they were mostly new ones. So, most importantly, though, I'll have the medals I need to buy out the exchange shop with stamina potions. Because, as I mentioned before, I'm... no stamina, guys, I can't farm. What do we got? Oh, that's actually a good gun. I'll take that. That's obviously my first one, but... I'll take that. Once again, I can't really complain. Getting four purples in a row. That surpassed my expectations. <laughs> you might be surprised. But my expectations at ground level. <laughs> um, okay, I think we should have gotten all the books for that as well. Two... Six, eight, ten. Yeah. Great. Perfect. Grab those. Uh, one other thing I can do is we can do the daily summons while I've got you here. I'm checking my notes here to see if I've missed anything. Okay guys, so I mentioned already but the weapons tier list for the remaining weapons that we haven't done yet, me and Flip will be covering them in due time but Flip is away this weekend, he's going going on holidays and it doesn't feel right for me to do a review on these tier lists based on a spreadsheet that he made and he's, and he's more of an expert than me on this topic so I, I'll definitely wait for him to come back and I hope you guys can just settle in for a bit longer. Um, apart from that, unit review as well for all the web, all the characters in the game, um, that'll be coming too. Um, also, PvP Arena Season 2 loadout, I mentioned that as well. Uh, that should be it. I got, a, I got a couple of other videos as well in the works, but I'm not going to reveal them now. Anyway, I think I've taken up enough of your time, so thank you for tuning in. It's good to be making videos. I just wish I had more time. Uh, you probably know that I do work full time and just sometimes knack it after work, you know? Alright, enjoy your weekend and good luck with your summons.
Take care.